tragedy. We're going to do, and, and what happened in Las Vegas is in many ways a miracle. The police department has done such an incredible job, and we'll be talking about gun laws this time, but, but I do have to say, how quickly the police department was able to get in was really very much of a miracle. Hello everyone, I'm Graham Ledger and welcome to the Daily Ledger, our cover story, the political response to the massacre on the Vegas Strip. President Trump is now suggesting that gun control might be worthy of discussion in the wake of the slaughter in Las Vegas that left 59 people dead and more than 500 wounded. And of course, Democrats are chomping at the bit. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer chiding the president to, quote, come out against the absurd law about silencers. Question. For Senator Schumer, how would a silencer have changed the dynamic in Las Vegas or any other crime by firearm, for that matter? Answer, it wouldn't. Still, Democrat machine is in high, radical, anti-Second Amendment gear right now, wasting no time turning the greatest mass murder in modern U.S. history into political opportunity. To talk about policy change in the wake of a mass shooting is to politicize it, is to cheapen it. I reject that argument in full force because the reality is every single day there's a mass shooting. Every single day, 80 people die from gun violence. Unfortunately, the news media don't pay attention to that regular carnage. If we aren't talking about policy change the day after a mass shooting in this country, then you are never talking about policy change because a mass shooting happens on average every day. Unfortunately, the ones in which eight people are shot or 12 people are shot do not get national attention. Second, whether we like it or not, the world's attention, the country's attention, is positioned on this question of how we protect our country from harm in the immediate aftermath of these mass shootings. It's an enormous gift to the gun lobby, to the forces of status quo, if we cannot talk about how to change our laws to make people safer when everyone's mind is on that question. Mass shootings, as Senator Murphy said earlier, have become a daily occurrence. If our critics would say, please don't exploit the event of a mass shooting by speaking on the floor, as Senator Murphy's made clear, then we wouldn't be able to speak any day of the year because they are so common. We can't let this become the new American normal. We can't just shrug our shoulders when we see over 30,000 Americans shot and killed year after year after year. We can't sit back and do nothing while hundreds of our fellow Americans are shot in one night simply because they went out to hear a music concert. We have to ask ourselves, is there nothing? Is there nothing we can do? Because that becomes part of the debate, right? One side says, let's, let's take action by way of legislation or take some action that would reduce the likelihood that you have more tragedies like this, more mass shootings. But, but the response immediately comes back that the other side says, well, we agree that it's tragic. We agree we want to prevent it. We agree we want to reduce the likelihood. But there is nothing we can do legislatively to reduce the likelihood or to prevent it. And I don't think anyone would argue that, the, that a law that passes in the aftermath of law, this Las Vegas tragedy or a law that passes even in the aftermath of, of, of Sandy Hook Elementary School if, that, if the law, the proposals, the bills, really, that were voted on here in the Senate in 2013, if they had passed, no one can be with, can argue with certitude uh, or scientific precision that if you pass this law, this many lives will be saved. Yes, a piece of paper will save lives, according to the Democrats. Tell that to all the people who have relied on restraining orders for protection. It's been proven time and time again that more guns in the hands of more good people is safer rather than fewer guns. And of course, the focal point of this attack right now on the Second Amendment is the National Rifle Association, like the NRA somehow condones murder. 
So what's the response from the NRA? Joining me now from Atlanta, Georgia, NRA member and political commentator, Jason Swindle. Uh, Jason, I don't know what the official response uh, by the NRA is, and I don't know that you have an official response. You are a member of the NRA, but uh, I know that in general it can't be terribly happy, the NRA, when the president comes out and says, hey, yeah, we might need to have a national conversation on more gun legislation. And number one, this is not the time. And number two, it's been proven over and over again that more gun legislation does not remove firearms from the hands of bad guys. Well, you're correct, and good afternoon. Uh, I am a member of the National Rifle Association. However, I don't speak on behalf of the NRA. Here's, here's what my response would be to that. The debate today and what's being discussed today is an emotional response. We all pray for the victims in Las Vegas and their families. This has to be addressed from a factual standpoint and from a rational standpoint. Where did this happen? It happened in a gun-free zone. There was a study done recently that shows that 92% of mass shootings like this between 2009 and 2014 were in gun-free zones. They're the most dangerous places you could possibly be. The, um Debate right now is going to be uh, the, the, the the Democrats are obviously going to uh, uh, monopolize the debate, and the debate right now they're framing is is more gun legislation that somehow it would have stopped this. So I look at it differently. Um, I think that we ought to have a national recognition of freedom and liberty, uh, because those people who were gunned down, unfortunately, to me in Las Vegas, represented what is best of this country, and that is the the right of freedom to assemble and to enjoy a concert like this. Yes, a madman broke it up, but just think about the other uh, opportunities in this country and all the other con uh, concerts in this country, all the other gatherings in this country that have been peaceful and, and that people have enjoyed the freedoms and the liberties in this country. I agree with you 100%. And we, we do have the freedom to assemble. We do have the freedom to go to concerts, go wherever we want to go. Now, some places are dangerous uh, venues to go to. Uh, this proved to be the case here in Las Vegas, but nobody would have known this would have happened. And you're correct about particularly Senate Democrats are using this as a political platform. They're using it for political purposes to, number one, try to pass legislation that, as you mentioned earlier, is just a piece of paper like a restraining order um, that will do no good. Freedom, as you mentioned, freedom to go where you want, freedom to possess a firearm, freedom to carry a firearm concealed is what protects and allows us to actually go to places and be in a protected environment. I think this is a wonderful opportunity to educate the American public about the facts regarding firearms. You have Senator Durbin going to the floor of the United States Senate uh, saying that 30,000 people are killed by firearms every year. That is a terribly misleading uh, statement and statistic. When we know the component, the large component of that 30,000, 20,000 are people who have committed suicide by using firearms. But there are statistic after statistic that, that the NRA and, and people who happen to care about the Constitution, particularly the Second Amendment, and the reason the framers of the Constitution put the Second Amendment in there at position number two among the amendments, um, this is a great opportunity to educate the American people. It is. And I'm also a criminal defense attorney uh, in the Atlanta area as well. So I see gun violence. Uh, I represent people who have been accused of using firearms uh, in an unlawful manner. But I'm also a constitutional scholar as well. And the framers did put the Second Amendment into the Constitution for a specific purpose. It wasn't for hunting. It wasn't for people just to uh, be able to have firearms, uh, just to have them. The Second Amendment was specifically drafted to protect the people from a tyrannical government. 
that that is the reason now some people don't want to hear that i'm not advocating that anyone uh use firearms against government officials but that was the purpose and that's why you see so many people particularly democrats who want to take away firearms from the people that's right i, I say somewhat tongue-in-cheek that the large difference between the united states and mexico is the second amendment now, you look at mexico you look at a people who do not have the second amendment and look what the government has done to them over the many many decades in mexico unfortunately no this is a great time to educate people and remind people that it's it's more likely that guns will help you about a hundred times more likely that guns will help you rather than hurt you that, that's exactly right um we even here talk today or i have on facebook from many of my friends who say that ar-15s for instance uh need to be taken away they need to be making they need to be made illegal uh, i own an ar-15 myself why do I own that? For personal protection. I own other firearms in my home for personal protection. If somebody enters my home in the middle of the night, wishing to commit a felony, wishing to hurt my family or myself, there will be protection there to ensure that that doesn't happen. So, go ahead. I think that uh, the bottom line is uh, we ought to have a national discussion in this country uh, whether gun-free zones should even exist, whether they're even constitutional. When you read uh, the Second Amendment, as, as I read it, I suppose a private entity has a, a choice to, uh, to make in terms of a gun-free zone. But in general, and generally speaking, it's almost an anti-constitutional move. And that should be part of the national conversation, not led by Chuck Schumer and Dick Derman on the floor of the United States Senate. Jason, thank you. Coming up next.